This is in response to Billy's Talking Points memo of Monday, September 8th, 2014. Uh, you know, Billy, I haven't been following your Talking Points very much. Um, there isn't anything that I get out of them anyway, but the unfortunate thing is that a lot of, a lot of other people do get a lot out of what you have to say. Uh, I believe it is all in a negative way. Uh, but this talking points uh, to me was one of the weakest ones uh, that uh, you seem to have had, and uh, it uh, centered around leadership and uh, President Obama. Now, of course, when you went into leadership, you had to lead in with your own little plug on your own little book that's coming up, and about patent. And uh, yeah, I do believe that you mentioned Roosevelt, Stalin, and Hitler. And um, let's just say, uh, if we just compare those three. Uh, on a political standpoint uh, with Obama is that uh, Hitler and Stalin uh, had, a, had many, many, many ruthless men who believed in his ideology um, uh, and were tr true followers of it and were willing to, to, to go to the death, let's just say, uh, to uh, uh, follow that ideology. Uh, and I'm not saying it made efficient government. I'm not saying it made effective government. Uh, but they were, they were the leaders because they had followers who were willing to go with them all the way. Now, in terms of Roosevelt, he did have a pretty decent Congress to work with. He was able to enact a lot of a, a lot of laws. Uh, he was able to see ahead of time what was going to happen in World War II and to prepare uh, the United States for a wartime economy. Um, we often consider him the greatest leader of the 20th century for the United States. And then if you get to Obama, well, it goes to if you have Patton. Patton was a, was a leader. Of course, he, again, had many, many, many men uh, who uh, uh, were uh, believed fully in his ideology, believed fully, and they made sure that they passed that down so that it was successful. Um, Whereas if we look at Obama, uh, you and your ilk, the Republican Party, uh, the Tea Party, etc., have done every single solitary thing possible to the point that it hurt the better interest of the United States citizens not to allow President Obama to be an effective leader. So things that the Republicans were for, for at one point in time, when President Obama became for them, they became against them. I do believe that's one of the terms is referred to as moving the goalposts. And yes, it is extremely difficult to uh, to be uh, because your 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 value of what a leader is for you, you know, uh, is based solely on what I would refer to as pop pop culture. What can be seen at that particular day and how you want to interpret it in your own way. So as I have said many times before, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. There's a, his upcoming speech is coming up, and uh, he will make a, a much more definitive explanation as to how we are going to defeat ISIL, um, one that is based on planning, based on research, based on logistics, based on uh, money, uh, based on partnerships with other countries, uh, understanding that they have factions within their own countries, there are parties within their own countries, some of them, um, that uh, other people have their own agendas, that they have to work in a certain way, we have to nudge them into doing things that they have not done before in terms of uh, going against their sisters and brothers in the Arab world, so that there's a lot going on. That's what true leadership to me is all about. And that this also, this fight will not be a six-week war, uh, like our good friend, your good friend, Dick Cheney said a long time ago, and or as Wolfowitz said, that I don't see it costing more than $50 billion. So, I mean, very unrealistic uh, expectations about um, Obama's predecessor uh, in terms of what would happen in the Iraq war. A much more realistic assessment is going to come out of his mouth this upcoming week when he makes his speech. And uh, uh, hopefully more things will be done in reference to how to deal with Putin in, uh, in the Ukraine and in Russia. 
So, and there's a lot going on behind the scenes that, uh, that, uh, it's not necessarily going to be, uh, we're not going to be aware of it maybe for a couple months. And I know that you want to have everything laid out in front of you nice and clear so that you fully understand it so that you can e either easily disagree or not disagree with it. Uh, but, uh, this president has shown tremendous leadership in, uh, not arming Syrian rebels and not arming rebels who may or may not truly be working on the behalf of the United States or even remotely on the behalf of the United States. And uh, I know it's very easy for us because we have a huge military industrial complex and uh, the, the, that uh, they probably would love to continue to sell more and more ornaments to the Defense Department so that we can give that stuff away over in the Middle East. And a lot of the stuff that we had in... Um, in Iraq has changed hands, uh, whether it has gone through uh, uh, different um, uh, rebel factions or through the Iraqi army where uh, there was lax oversight. Many of those armaments, guns, uh, surface-to-air missiles, tanks, etc., now are in ISIL's hands, whether they were stolen, uh, whether they were captured, whether they were given away. Um, you know, that's what we don't want. And that's what leadership is. Again, going back, making sure that none of this type of thing will come back and bite us in the ass. And I've also seen now that there appears to be reluctance, both on the Democratic part and on the Republican Party, uh, not to actually have a vote uh, to give uh, Obama the authority. Basically, so that Obama can take the blame on his own. And in most instances, not in most instances, the Republicans, so, you know, if he win, we were behind him all the way. And if he lost, we wouldn't have voted for that anyway. And that some of the Democrats would say that, but just invariably, 100% of the Republicans would do that. Uh, that's not leadership. That's not doing your elected duty of Congress. You know, they, all, often all of your people talk about the Constitution, the Constitution, the Constitution. And they have a constitutional right to either declare war or not declare war. And now they're not saying that they're going to declare war. So uh, I realize, Billy, uh, you want to use anything uh, to say to go against President Obama. But he has been doing a bang up job in reference to this. And it's just people like you who, you know, you can't see. You just can't see what's really going on. And it's unfortunate that what you can't see, you're telling to your people uh, as weakness.